guys, Christy here from The Silver Life and welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about HoneyBook Smart Files and we're gonna be honing in on invoices. Now, if you are just hearing about Smart Files and you're not even really sure what they are, go ahead and check out one of our previous videos on HoneyBook Smart Files that goes through exactly what they are, diving deep and showing you all of them. That way you can know exactly what it is and then in this video we can move forward in actually creating a smart file invoice. Okay, so with that, let's go in, let's talk about HoneyBook smart file invoices. I'm excited to show you around. Okay, let's go through HoneyBook smart file invoices. So you will see now when you're setting up the invoice section, you can have the invoice and you have the payment page. Whenever you add an invoice page, that is going to automatically add a payment page as well. So I just wanna walk through here some different things that we could do with the invoices. So first of all, if I click add block, this is where I can add a custom header, a message, anything that you want in terms of customizing this, right? So you can either have it blank, some people prefer to have it blank, or let's go ahead and add a header. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click text and here I'll put custom invoice. If you highlight over this, this is where you can change this text to anything you want. Super customizable. One thing before going into this branding of adding a header is I wanna talk about the company theme and settings. So really decking out your customization when it comes to smart files. So if you click on this little artist palette here, you can see that you can customize the theme of this smart file. So you can add any of the standard fonts. You can upload your own branding fonts. Choose what the default background color is, text color, highlight color. Decide on the button also, do you want it to be bold or not bold, italicized or not, the text color corner radius so how um, do you want it like square or round or somewhere in the middle questions how do you want the questions to appear if you're using um, adding like questions in there for a questionnaire or things like that or you can just click apply company theme so I always suggest in the beginning of starting your smart file journey go ahead and click edit company theme and it's gonna bring you into your company brand settings. So this is where you can click customize company theme and have this standard for every new smart file that you create. So when you're starting this, I highly recommend going in here, editing these settings to your liking so that you don't have to do it for every single smart file individually. Okay, so I wanted to show you that there. So now if I have custom invoice, right, I'm gonna go ahead and make this huge, I'm going to bring this in the middle and I'm going to make it my branding font Montserrat. So let's see, perfect. Okay, now I wanna add a background to this block. So you can see the different things you could do here. You could do columns, you can do um, change the background color, change the background color opacity. So if you have a background image over it, which I'll show you in a second, and then the content width. So if there was more content and text in here, you can change that content width and also change the padding. And then you can also make it custom. So let's add a background image here. And I'll add our standard, this one right here. What you're gonna see is you don't see anything right now because this background color opacity is 100. If I go like this, it's gonna start lightening. So I'm gonna lighten this a bit and then I'm going to crop this a little bit more. So let's say it has like the AirPods in it and then click apply. Now I want it to be a little bit bigger so let's add it to 80 and let's go ahead and add our logo. So here I'm gonna add an image and then I'm gonna put to Silva Life. So now I'm just gonna adjust this to really be like visually pleasing. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so I can add a custom size. So let's do 45 
and then it's a little bit hard to see so let's make this a little bit more um, dark and then since I added that logo it looks a little bit um, a little bit big so let's make this 75 Perfect. Okay, so now you see this is a header that we just created. So that's a little bit of branding lesson there. Now let's talk about the actual invoice itself. So going into the invoice, you really can customize a lot in here. You can change the name of the invoice. So say you wanted to name this, um, I'm going to do an, a photography example here. So if you wanted to name it photo session invoice contact info here. This is going to be the bill to information. You can choose to see this or not see it. Um, here you'll see right now you're in a template. Your client's name will be added automatically once you create this, right? You can also choose to send recurring invoices. When is this going to be? So is it going to be daily, weekly, monthly, yearly? This is a huge update in the HoneyBook invoicing world because you only used to be able to do recurring invoices on a monthly basis where now you can do bi-weekly, daily, custom, um, and on never on a specific date or after a specific amount of times. Um, so really cool option there. Allow your clients to pay with credit card, bank transfer, both. You can allow gratuity. Gratuity will be disabled for recurring invoices and requ require the client to auto pay. So you'll see the different options we have here when it comes to invoicing and recurring invoicing. Super awesome. So now you'll see, um, okay, let's click on here again. So if you want to send a recurring invoice, then you can also offer a discount. So say this is going to show up here, right? And there's going to be this highlighted little bubble, which is so nice. Um, so if you could do a percentage or a dollar amount, say I wanted to do $100 off, then that would deduct from the total. Another really cool option here. You can have tax, right? And you would have to check this. That's a, a big portion. People are like, wait, I added the tax, but it's not showing. You have to choose each individual item that you want to apply the tax to, and then it will populate at the bottom. But another thing that you can do is you can add other items. You can add a service fee. So say you wanted to add the credit card processing fee 3.5%. You can add that on there as well and choose which ones you want to add the service fee. So you'll see these auto populate at the bottom. Clients of ours in the past had been adding this manually as a an extra deliverable, but now you can add it here as a service fee, which is awesome. Note here, adding service fees and credit card fees are state to state dependent. So just be careful, make sure you check your state regulations before adding these to the invoices. Okay, so we added tax, we added a service fee. You can add multiple tax items. So say this was like another fee that you had, you can add that there and put the name of what it is. I'll go ahead and delete it. Um, and you can also hide it like here if you wanted to. Um, okay, so that is this portion, right? Now let's talk about adding packages. So if I delete this, then let's add a package. So if we go into the HoneyBook Packages section, this is going to be in Tools, My Templates, and these Packages section down below. You can add custom packages. What's the package? What's the deliverables? What is the price, etc.? Do you want to have tax automatically applied or not? And then these are, and you can also change the units here. Um, this, even if your packages may vary a little bit or your pricing may change per person, it's always a good idea to at least put some uh, templates in here that you can work from so you don't have to be typing deliverables individually every single time. So if I come back into here and I want to add an item package, I can click in here and then just search photography package and then add that here. So now this is gonna be here. I can add an image as well. So if you wanted to add an image, 
a lot of times, so we do HoneyBook and ClickUp setup, so I'll add that logo in here just so they see that, what they're getting. Um, with a bunch of clients you've worked with in the past, especially photography clients, they'll put like a photo here. If it's a couple session, we'll do a couples. If it's a wedding session or wedding package, they'll put a wedding photo, etc. Um, so you'll see here, I added the new package. You can always add other item packages. So say you wanted to do a travel fee, you can add that here, put the price, let's say 150, and then that will show up. You can also click on here and choose not to show the image if you don't want. So there you see adding the packages, super simple. You can always come in here and adjust the deliverables and the price as well. And once this is added to a client, it is not going to um, adjust anything within the templates. So you can, I'll show you how we upload this for a client and then you can adjust anything. Again, it's not gonna change the template. And then let's talk payment schedules. Okay, so here are smart dates and smart um, payments. So when you click on the actual payment, you can decide three different things. Either it could be a custom amount. If you delete this, it's just going to be the full amount. But if you wanna add a payment plan, you can click payment and you can say however many payments you wanna give the person and then choose when. So maybe you have a deposit. So this is a custom amount, it's a $100 deposit. And then you wanna go ahead and divide the other two equally. So let's try that again, 100, save. Okay, so this is 100 and then these, you can either do a percentage or equal payments. So I'm gonna do equal payments moving forward. So it'll be 100, 150, 150. So then let's decide on the payment dates. So you, if it's a deposit, you could do it upon receipt. Then the next two, let's say you wanna do um, smart date. So I wanna do one month before the project, save. And then the next one I want to be on the project date. So this would be due on project date. And I'll show you these will auto populate when we add it to the client. So you can check out the different um, smart dates and due date options for payments. They're super helpful. Um, and then if you click this gear icon, you can choose, again, this is send recurring invoices if you wanted to, credit card, bank transfer, or both. Do you wanna allow gratuity? And do you wanna require your client to auto pay? So this means they will consent when they pay the first payment that the next payments in the payment plan will be auto drafted. This is super helpful when it comes to not having to chase your clients and other payment, other CRMs sometimes will require them to check the box where this it's auto bringing them into that process and they're still consenting because it'll say you will be brought into auto pay, but you are the one who has control of that, which is awesome. Okay, so then let's go to the payment page here. You can see here's the payment. Um, there's not much really that you would change on this here, except that you can add another banner to the top and then you would change these payment settings here. Another option I wanna show you is the buttons here. You can actually change the text on these. So whether you wanna do next or next payment, let me take my caps off. Payment. And then this, instead of next, you can put submit. Also here you can say, okay, once this is the button for the last page, we can redirect them to a URL. So what do you want that to be? Maybe it's a site on your website. This is really great for other things too, like brochures and things like that, where it will redirect them. Really awesome. Um, okay, so that is really it for going through the invoice different options to customize. A couple different things here. If you click this gear icon, you can change the thumbnail of the um, template, the smart file, and the name of it. Require a client to get an access code. So this is two-factor authentication. So just making your 
uh, the security of your client's information and your information more secure. If you keep this on, what's gonna happen is when they click the button in the email for the smart file, then they're going to be sent an access code and then they'll have to put it in to access the smart file. You can also set the button on the last page. You can do that here in the settings as well and you can turn on file expiration. So let's say we wanted to give them 48 hours to actually complete this file and let's display the expiration date on the file as well. So I'm gonna click save and exit and then the three dots here as well. You can send a test, duplicate this, star it, move it to a specific folder, edit the email settings. So what do you want the button on the email to say? So let's say invoice and then you can choose the email template that you want to send with this. You can always customize that when you bring it up. And then um, you can print or delete the file as well. So I'm going to update all these changes and then we're actually going to bring this into a client portal. Okay, so now I am in John Smith's profile. I added the project date as February 1st. I'm gonna set that as free so it doesn't actually block off my calendar. And now let's create that new invoice smart file. I'm gonna click create new invoice, invoice template. And now you're gonna see all the information that populated. So we have bill to John Smith and the email, the invoice number, PO number, all of that, invoice date, and then next payment due date. And then you'll see here the package. You can choose the tax and service fee. And then the payments. July 18th is the first to secure the date because that's today. Then we have January 1st and February 1st. Those have auto filled. So now I just click share. And then you can choose the email template because I didn't choose a one as a template. It didn't pop up here, but you can choose one in here. It will upload with their name and then you can go ahead and send that over. So that is it for the invoice tutorial. I hope this video was helpful for you. Okay, so I hope that tutorial was helpful for you in being able to set up a smart file invoice and showing you all the different features it has with payment plans, schedules, packages, things like that. If you wanna follow along for all of our other HoneyBook videos that are coming down the pipeline or ones that we already have in our channel, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a beat. With that, I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions about smart file invoices or anything in general when it comes to HoneyBook, make sure to drop it in the comments below. And if you're brand new to HoneyBook and you have not signed up for a membership yet, make sure to use our code in the description below so you can get 50 percent off your first year. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Christy from Disable Life, where we love all things systems, organization, honey book. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.